My name's Mavis Smeaton. My husband and I moved here in 1959, newly married couple, and lived here until 1992. We acquired the farm from a former returned soldier. He'd lived here for seven years on his own and decided to sell, and we were given the opportunity to purchase this wonderful piece of land. Although in the early days we were a long way from Auckland, from other services, but um, no, it was, um, it was a, a new adventure for us. <laughs> we were young. It was nothing like it is now. The farm was originally in, in six paddocks, so it was very spread out, and it was in the intervening years that we developed it all with the yards, the fencing, and um, planting of trees, and farming in general. The stockyards were erected about 1962 because our st cattle numbers were building up and we were reliant on neighbours for using their facilities. Um, early on, top dressing uh, was an important part of our farming and so the airstrip and facilities were developed here. The airstrip runs down there on that flat area and the planes simply landed and turned around, filled up and then top dressed down there. Farm. Waianua was our name for the farm. Waianua has a historical association for me because my ancestors lived in a little area in Southland called Waianua. Waianua, translated as I understand, means rainbow over the water, and Waianua just sort of seemed right here because we did have the water. So the, the horses have been tying up to the yards, using it to saddle up and things. Have they really? Yeah. yeah. Goodness me, to think that when we, these were built in the early 1960s, they were built for cattle because our numbers were increasing and we needed somewhere to manage and handle them. A labour of love that Ian built personally. Yeah. Uh, not easy because, the, as you can see, oh, yeah. they will never fall down. No. <laughs> you can still see the original hinges even, which is yeah. wonderful. We had a small herd originally of Angus uh, black cattle and of course the sheep complemented the cattle and then in latter years we, we actually did farm deer, fallow deer. The facilities were down further and all the fencing attributable to um, deer farming. We had a, a raceway system where it was easy to, to bring them in because they're quite flighty little animals, the fallow deer, but lovely and graceful. So that was our deer farming operation, probably for about 10 years or so until it became unviable. We made time to come down here because we had all this on our doorstep and if you were down here and saw the fish, the mullet leaping around, I mean it was just so tantalising. <laughs> so the net was invariably on our tractor when Ian and I were going around the farm feeding out and if the tide was right, everything else, we would whip out here, hopefully get a few mullet, probably the snapper if they were lucky, and, and then we'd be on our merry way again. As time and life progressed, we did have our own runabout and we used to launch it along there. But of course with mud flats, you had to be very careful and cautious where you took the tractor. And then out on the harbour fishing. But we did have picnics down here, Christmas with family and, that's, and other friends. We had a lot of fun just further along the beach here where we had a, a very special spot. It's all yeah. regrowth tea tree there. but. 
we Ian used to keep it all uh, rotary slashed. It yep. was a lovely large area for just relaxing in yep. and then easy access out onto the beach. And I must mention we had the most enormous macrocarpa that washed up onto the beach. Right. Yep. It was enormous where it came from and Ian carved it out so that it was our fish filleting. Oh, wow. uh, and when the yep. tide was in, yep. uh, well, what did we do? Fillet our fish and yep. <laughs> chili bin and home. Yep. Yes, we had some fabulous times here. It was an asset. Thank you.